would you be acting defensively and it's making you a less effective communicator? Would you like to be able to change this? I've studied negotiation, persuasion, and influence for years and I've made every single mistake you could possibly imagine. If you want to be able to read people better and transform your defensive behavior into powerful communication, keep watching. Hey, this is Damon Cart from Life Mastery Gym, empowering people all over the world to learn, to improve, and to take charge of your destiny. So if that sounds good, please click subscribe to this YouTube channel so you can get these videos on a regular basis. If you watched my last video, you noticed that I was in Bucharest, that's Bucharest, Romania. Now I'm in Budapest, <laughs> Budapest, Hungary. You may be thinking, I don't act defensively, so I don't need this video. Or if, I, if you do act defensively, you know it, but I think you might be surprised. And then there are some of you who you know that defensive behavior, that acting defensively is disabling your persuasion and influence skills. By the end of this video, you will be able to read people's defensive behavior and you'll be able to recognize when you're behaving defensively and how to change it. So the important thing to know is that defensive behavior attracts aggression to you. Now, a lot of people think that it works the other way around, that when somebody acts aggressively towards them that they naturally respond defensively and of course that happens too but you may not be aware that you're giving off or you're acting defensively or your your body posture and your behavior is defensive or it looks defensive to other people and it's you're not conscious of this and so when that happens you actually are inviting aggression and you may not even be realizing it. Defensive behavior puts you in the victim role and that's a place you definitely do not want to be. Some people purposefully go there, some people go there accidentally. Right now decide that you are not going to be a victim anymore and that you're going to take charge of your behavior. You're going to take charge and control over what's within your control and that is your behavior. That is the one thing you definitely control. You may not be able to control other people. In fact, you definitely cannot control other people, but you do have control over your own behavior. So commit to that right now. There's three things I'm going to show you in this video and I've already told you the first one and that is defensiveness invites aggression. So that's number one. Number two is you want to be responsive, not reactive. So you don't want to be reactive in situations. You want to be responsive and I'm going to explain what this, what I mean by that and how to do it. The third thing is to pre-frame situations before you get into them. And I'm, of course, I'm going to explain more about that as well and how to do that. The best way I can describe the first one, which is defensiveness invites aggression is by telling you a story and actually two stories. And the first one is, I remember one time I was watching a woman going after her dog. She had a little dog and I guess it gotten off its leash and she was chasing after it. And there happened to be another dog around that wanted to play with that little dog. And that other dog was about twice the size of the little dog, but it wasn't a big dog. It was probably, I don't know, a little taller than my knee. And the woman goes and gets her little dog and then the other dog starts jumping up because it wanted to play with the, the smaller dog. And the woman just freaked out and started running. And that, that other dog was being playful. It was not being aggressive. But when she started to run, the other dog started to chase her. And then she started to panic and she started to scream. And I'm watching this whole situation. I'm thinking, this is not a vicious dog. But she invited the aggression of that dog by being defensive. And animals do this all the time. If you see it, you can see this in nature. This is not a uh, something that is an intellectual type thing where people are, are watching other people and they're looking for weaknesses. No, this happens in nature. And so this dog naturally started getting aggressive because she started acting fearful and defensive. And she starts running, she starts screaming, so the dog really starts chasing. And at a certain point, she kind of realized that she was really overreacting here and she just stopped. And then the dog just stopped. The dog, the dog wasn't being aggressive at that point when she finally just stopped and interrupted this pattern of behavior. And this is kind of a Zen thing. Uh, in Buddhism, I think they actually teach this, that there are patterns. Nature is, in physics is always looking or seeking to balance systems and balance nature and balance patterns and balance processes. So if you're in some sort of negotiation or you're in a sales position or a sales situation, or anything where you're interacting with other people, if you go into defensive mode, 
in order to balance the, the system, it, it invites the other person to become more aggressive. Another example of this was I was when I was flying here, I flew into Zurich, Switzerland, and I had to catch another flight over to Budapest. And I had to go through Zurich, the Swiss customs, and there was a woman before me, she was also American. She was traveling with her son, who was probably 11, maybe 12 years old, and she was not in any way a suspicious looking character. She looked very innocent. Uh, she, she, was, uh, she was basically a, a house mom, it, it looked like to me. So she gets up to the window, she's right before me, she gets to the customs officer, she hands over the passports of her and her son. The customs official immediately started to get a little bit aggressive with her and started asking these kind of aggressive questions about where she was traveling, where she was going, where she was staying, did she have a return flight, and on and on and on. And immediately she got very defensive, like she had done something wrong. I think it was clear to both him and to anyone who was watching this that this woman was not a was not up to anything suspicious or up to anything wrong but her posture was very defensive she she moves back and she started shifting to the side like she was looking for some sort of support and she also started offering to show her son's birth certificate and started offering all these other things but she was obviously in a, in a place where she looked defensive her voice tone had shifted and the more she did this and the more frantic she became the more this customs officer questioned her even harder and got really aggressive with her to the point where i started to get a little triggered here because she looked so innocent to me and this guy was being very aggressive with her and really what it turned he became a bully and it was like he was pushing harder and harder and this woman was giving him everything that he was asking for and she and of course she be, the more frantic she became though the more he pursued this finally he lets her go and this took far longer than what it should have usually when you're going through customs you get a few questions and then they move you on most of the time they just look at your passport and let you go so what i had done and this is going to bring us to the next thing about pre-framing. What I had done when I saw this is I memorized his questions and I was ready with my answers. So when I got up to the front and he starts asking me the same questions, well, first of all, I did a few, a few, I did something else differently. Instead of leaning back like she did, and instead of doing like this and like this and referring to my bags or to other people or trying to look for support or uh, closing my eyes more, when people close their eyes more, it's like they're trying to block out the situation, they don't like it. I leaned into the window and as if to say, go ahead, ask me the same questions. And that's what I was thinking. I was a little angry with this guy because of the way he treated that woman. And so I leaned into the window and he asked his first question, where are you going? I said, Budapest. And he stopped and he paused and you could tell that this was, I was a different, completely different person. So it changed his state. He started to ask me a few of the other questions that I had and I just rattled the, the answers off really fast. I didn't take my eyes off of him. I looked him right in the eyes. I wasn't trying to be aggressive and I wasn't being pushy. I wasn't being mean. I, even my voice tone was neutral, but he could tell that I had my answers ready and I was not going to back down. And the worst thing in his situation that could happen, and this is the worst thing you can do to a bully, is to humiliate them. And so when he realized that if he tried that line of questioning with me, he was going to seem rather pitiful. He was going to seem rather ignorant if he tried to pursue that with me. He backed off. I think he only asked me three questions and then he pushed me right through. He wasn't going to take the chance of looking stupid by, ask, by repeatedly hitting me with questions that were completely useless and absurd and, and didn't matter. I did exactly the opposite of what the woman had done before me and it put him on the defensive in a sense, even though, I mean, he's really in charge, he's the officer, but I also hadn't done anything wrong. And so if I hadn't done anything wrong and I wasn't being mean, I wasn't being aggressive, he had nothing to charge me with. He had nothing uh, to put, to detain me for. And the same was true for that woman, but she acted as if she did. She came from a place of being very defensive, even though there was nothing to be defensive about. She wasn't breaking the law, she wasn't doing anything wrong, but she acted that way, so it invited his bullying and his aggression. Let's move on to responsiveness instead of reaction. Reaction really is about hesitating. Reaction is about seeing something happen and waiting and not doing anything about it. So, for example, when I saw what was happening with this lady in the, the situation with the customs official in Zurich, I could have done nothing and just waited 
to intercept <laughs> his questions at the moment. But no, instead, I took responsibility here and I memorized his questions and got my answers ready. So when you see something happening, people often hesitate to take action. It's like they're waiting for more and more information before they do something. And if you become reactive, it means you're already too late. Bruce Lee, the martial artist and movie star, was also a philosopher and he used to talk about this in fighting. If you were fighting someone and you were reacting to the punches and the kicks coming at you, then you were already too late. But if you were responding to it, then you would be faster than the other person. And here's a good example of how you can see this happening a lot. When two people are dancing, when, they're, when you see a couple who are dancing and they're doing really well, where they're, they're in sync with each other, it almost looks like they know what each other's going to do before they do it because they're responding to each other. They're not reacting to each other. So they become more of a unity. They become more of a whole and they're, they're moving together. And so that's what you want to do in situations where you need to communicate effectively is you want to respond rather than react. And so this will require that you develop communication skills and NLP is a great model to learn communication skills and so these should become second nature it's when they're not second nature it's when you're practicing them that they're more reactive so the woman in the custom situation was being reactive i on the other hand was being i was being responsive he was asking the question i wasn't stopping to think about it i wasn't hesitating i wasn't panicking i was just saying the answers because i knew the answers and i wasn't afraid of what my answers were a lot of times you'll see when somebody is being reactive in a communication situation Situation, it's because they're listening to themselves speak their answer and checking in with it. Is this okay to say this? And you'll see a lot of people do this. They'll hesitate in their communication or they want to say something, but they hold back and then they bounce this back and forth in their head over and over and over again. And so that by the time they finally say it, if they even do say it, it, it sounds like they've thought it through for so long and it, it doesn't really fit the situation. It's a good idea to go back into your past memories and think about times when you reacted rather than you responded and think about how you would want to, how you would treat that situation differently. So any situation where you waited to take an action and that by the time you took it, it was too late, that's a reaction. How would you have responded in those situations? And you can actually do this. You can actually think about how you would have responded in those situations so that in the future, if you're ever in a situation like that, you can respond to it rather than react to it. The third and final step is to pre-frame the situation. So going back to the example that I gave about in being in Zurich with the customs officer, I knew what I wanted. I wanted to get to my flight. I had enough time to get there, but if I was to be detained, I could have missed my flight. So I was very clear that I wanted to get on the other side as fast as I could. I was also very clear that I didn't like this guy. I didn't like the way that he behaved and I was very clear that I was not going to let him treat me that way and that I was going to do the opposite of what that woman did so that I could put him on the defensive and get through that line very quickly. Think about situations that you're about to go in, whether it's a sales situation, a negotiation, anytime where you need to communicate effectively and think about what is it that I really want in that situation and pre-frame it. Think it through say, okay, here's this is what I want, this is the outcome that I want, this is the target that I want. How do you want that other person to respond to you? So the pre-framing in that situation for me was, I knew what I wanted, I wanted to get past the customs official as fast as possible so I could make my flight. I knew what his questions were, so my strategy was to have the answers ready so that I could, I could rattle them off as quickly as possible and to shift my posture and look him in the eye directly so that he could see that I was not going to back down and I was not afraid of his questions. Let's recap. So number one, defensive behavior attracts aggression. So be very careful, very conscious of your behavior. If you're doing this, if, you're, if you go to answer somebody and you're, you're kind of looking to the side or you're shutting your eyes or you're pulling back from the situation, that will invite aggression. So check in with your posture, breathe deeply, move a little bit forward, look people directly in the eye and don't try to divert in either direction and move forward. Keep thinking that you're, you're going forward in this situation, not backwards. You're not defending, you're in an offensive position which is moving forward. Number two, be responsive rather than reactive. Trust your gut, practice good communication skills and just be able to do them as second nature, don't hesitate. Number three, before you get into a situation, pre-frame it. Think about what it is that you want and have at least three strategies of how you're going to get 
get there and even think it through of how you want that other person to respond to you. A lot of times people will actually use the strategy of trying to put you into a defensive mode, into a defensive position so that now you have to defend yourself and that's not where you want to be. Anytime you're in a position of having to defend yourself, you're going to look bad. No matter if you're telling the truth, no matter if you, you have nothing to hide, this is a strategy people will try to use. So if you know that ahead of time, if you have pre-framed the situation, if you've thought it through and realized, okay, this person might try to put me on the defensive, they might accuse me of something just to make me defend myself and deny it, which makes me look bad. So how am I going to overcome this? How am I going to sidestep this ahead of time? This only works if you commit to using it. It's not going to work at all if you don't take action here. So commit to doing the things that I'm teaching you in this video. And one way you can start that commitment is by taking a small action. So write yes in the comments below if you're going to commit to this process. And by taking that action, it will propel you to take the action of actually applying this and implementing it in your communication to become more effective. If you like this video, you're going to love what's on my website. Go to lifemasterygym.com. There you will find some free training that you can sign up for and get immediate access to. You also definitely want to be on my email list. I'm going to make a big announcement in a few days. And once that announcement passes, what I'm offering, once it passes, it's gone. So make sure you get on that right away. Click like right down here and make sure if you haven't already, to click that subscribe button, hit that bell, so that you'll be notified when I put new videos out there. Signing off from Budapest, Hungary. Take care. How's that? Perfect.